surgery uh, by Dr. Sarban Sethi, who is currently working as cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Arunodaya Desert Eye Hospital at Gurgaon, Haryana. She served as assistant professor at RIO Sitapur and Savita Medical College, Chennai before. She was awarded Developing Country Eye Researcher Fellowship at ARVO Florida in 2014 and was awarded International Hero Award at AIOS 2020. She has been one of the pioneers of MIGS in India and uh, first to inject eye stent inject in her state. Now she will be operating on the uh, left eye of this 72 year old gentleman who is referred to us from other hospital and uh, uh, the patient has vision of 6-9 parts in the left eye and phakic patient and has primary open angle glaucoma with IOP of 11 millimeters of mercury and he is on two AGMs, Traveton and Timolol eye drops in his left eye. He has open angles on gonioscopy and with iris processes and left eye he has a 0.8 cup disc ratio and his CCT uh, is 501 microns in the right eye and 550 microns in the left eye and anterior chamber depth is 3.312 uh, mm in the left eye. Over to Dr. Sethi. Uh, good afternoon everyone and thank you so much for having me Dr. Luthra. This is a wonderful setup that he has. So what I'm demonstrating over here is uh, micro incision glaucoma surgery and we are going to be using an eye stent inject implant on this patient who's got an open angle over here. What I've done is already positioned the patient. I'll show you how at the end of the surgery. So you can visualize right now, if I can center it a little more, the red line that you see over there is the trabecular meshwork. Uh, we can, uh, please center it, Shaivan, Shai please center it. Okay. It is not focused, Shaivan. Is this better? Yeah, better. Okay. This is a little off focus for me. Anyway, okay, now okay. So I have this injector in my hand. It's too zoomed for me to show it right now. Right now I'm going to start with demonstrating just the implantation. We can talk about the ergonomics a little later. So there is an insertion sleeve which, is ne which needs to be closed before insertion. And I've already made my 2.2 incision which is temporal. I'm sitting temporally to the patient. There is a cohesive viscoelastic which has already been injected into the eye. So when I enter the eye, this is how it looks like. This is the insertion sleeve. If I pull it back, I'm able to see a, a trocar. This is a pointed tip over here. Is that visible to everyone? And just within that, I can see one eye stent inject. So what I'm supposed to do is go perpendicularly so that the trocar hits the trabecular meshwork perpendicularly. I'm dimpling right now and then releasing a little and then shooting and very slowly withdrawing. So blood reflux is a good sign. So you can see, is everyone able to see that titanium inject which is right there? So now I'm going ahead with the second implantation. Important thing over here is going perpendicular. Saiban, could you focus a little more because uh, the previous uh, injection oh, was okay. not so visible actually. Can you reduce the zoom? Uh, reduce the zoom. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Zoom, reduce, Karo Shaiva. Reduce the zoom. Uh, reduce the zoom, yeah. Oh, okay. Now it's okay? Right. Little more, better, better, but you can still reduce it, yeah. Little more. Okay. You can so reduce the you can see where it started bleeding is the yes, place yes. where I've injected my first eye stent. Okay. Now this so that red line is the place where she's going to inject. She's going to put two stents. She's already put one from where that red spot is coming. And now she's going to just insert the second. Go ahead. Yes, okay, now once I am again closing the insertion sleeve before coming out, I'm just going to fill the AC with a little more cohesive viscoelastic to show the to show the proper placement of this tent.
ओके आई पुट दिस प्रेजेंट दे दीजिए सो व्हाट बिकम्स चैलेंजिंग इज वर्किंग एक्स्ट्रा ऑक्यूलरली विद सच अ हाई मैग्निफिकेशन इन प्लेस So Saiban what is the best indication for us like a mixed device like let's say thing like the glaucos like which are your primary cases where you like to use this So the ideal patients are the patients who are the medicated IOP is under control with say about uh, for us it is not so. focused ma'am Yes sir I'm just doing it So this is the area of the first eye stent. Is is it centered? Now both the stents have been placed. It's just I'm making an effort to show where they are. So this is the area of the first eye stent. Here, this is where it is. Is it visible? This one. I think you have to just zoom out. Then they can see. Zoom it out, little. Okay. So here it is. Hmm. I think blood is not going. So then I tell it, you know. तो कह रहे कम करिए मैग्निफिकेशन मैग्निफाई देन लेट मी एंटर ऑन ये Hello, am I audible, Dr. Saima? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we would like to know whether the patient is pseudo fake or fake. Ma'am, this patient is fake. Okay, and uh, do you use pilocarpine for the surgery? So, uh, you ideally you don't have to. Okay. But in this patient, yes, I did because he accidentally got dilated. Okay. Okay. So now both the stents have been placed very well. I'm just trying to show where the two stents are. Hello, hello, Dr. Saiban. I'm Dr. Neelam here on this side. Good, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, good afternoon. So, do you put two stents in all cases, or uh, I mean, uh, what is advocated for? So, ma'am, this is a second generation eye stent, wherein inside one injector there is already two stents. Already preloaded. Yes, preloaded okay. two stents. Okay. And uh, the sec, the first generation one came with just one single eye stent. Okay, and uh, what is the likely cost? Uh, of this eye stent uh so it is about 69000 okay and usually now i think almost all the insurance panels have the uh, device under cover okay all right yeah so that is a big advantage and what is your experience on uh, how much iop lowering does this pair of uh, eye stent does in the post operative period So, ma'am, it depends from patient to patient, but uh, it, in uh, the right selection of cases is very important because you know you the procedure only succeeds in the patients that you are chosen very well. So, I have had about I in fact have uh, you know collected data from about nine patients or so, and I saw that uh, there was at least a two AGM drop in those nine patients and about. Uh, Three to four millimeters of IOP drop in three months alone. Okay, so uh, that was quite heartening for us to see. But I think cost constraint would be an issue for Indian patients. Yeah, if they are not uh, yeah. insured, yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you so much for showing such a beautiful surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Dr. Saiba, another question. Yes, I'm Dr. Smriti here. Hi. So, would you please tell us about uh, how you tilt the microscope to see the, uh, you know, the angle structures? Yes. So, uh, I'm going to go off. So, this is how the patient has, the patient's head has been tilted 35 to 45 degrees away from me. And the microscope has been tilted 35 degrees towards me. So, you can see this angulation. This is how the microscope is and the patient is away from you. And then you put the prism, you sit temporally always and uh, you're, you're supposed to treat the nasal half of the angle and the two stents ideally should be placed about two clock hours apart from each other. That's what we achieved over here also. Uh, reflux heme is uh, very normal. And now after the procedure is over, you have to put the patient back to position zero and the microscope to position zero to clear out all your cohesive viscoelastic and then uh, you close up the case. The follow up for this patient will be once I see him tomorrow. See, usually these patients are on AGMs for a long time. So you need to wait for about four to six weeks for the complete AGM wash off to happen to finally see the effect of this uh, device alone. So uh, the follow-up is usually POD1, then POD7, and then directly POD30. So that way also it's very convenient compared to the traditional trabeculectomy surgeries, which of course indications for that are completely different. So there's no comparison there. Uh, so just in case you are unable to inject in the nasal quadrant, is there any other position? So ma'am, that is why I said the selection of the patient is very important. This is, uh, see, in, in your mental space, you have to decide uh, the site of injection preoperatively itself when you're doing uh, gonioscopy on the slit lamp. Okay. So if you see a very fine open angle nasally, you know that these are the two quadrants that I'm going to. It's, it's also a good idea to mark. Like how we mark for toric IOLs, you can place two spots, marking spots where you're going to inject uh, preoperatively, which makes your life easier uh, intraoperatively. Okay, thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, would you like to combine it with cataract surgery or would you yes. like? Yes, are... of course. Of course, if the patient does have a um, visually significant cataract, it's usually done after the cataract surgery. And it, it probably takes 10 minutes more of your time and you're done in the same sitting. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Saiba. Thank you. Blockage rate. Ma'am, what is the blockage rate? Is there any blockage? Does this uh, so we have seen uh, peripheral anterior sinicae happen in one of the nine patients that um, I had uh, collected data for, but it did not, uh, you can't really say it's a blockage, then you do put the patient on pilocarpin and uh, hope that uh, that iris gets pulled out. But uh, that particular patient also did not have any bearing on the IOP. Although there was a, a pass over there, it did not have any bearing on the IOP. So ultimately, that's what you're concerned about. Yes, from time to time, it's a good idea to do gonioscopy to see the right positioning of your uh, uh, stent post-operatively also. But yes, uh, pass is a uh, established complication, but it's also rare at the same time. Not that the lumen gets blocked. Lumen doesn't get blocked. Madam, what is the incidence of uh, developing cataract after putting this stent if the, if the patient was faking? Sir, there has been no study done like that because uh, usually patients who undergo standalone eye stent are uh, fakic with no cataract, they're young patients. And also one has to understand this is a very new device, so it's not like we have longer than five year follow up. And in that study, which was not done in India, it was done uh, in the US, the five year, uh, there was no uh, cataract development for the standalone procedures in at the end of five years. So that's the longest uh, follow up we have for this uh, device. And Madam, could you t please tell us the reason why do you prefer it over the normal trabecular? Uh, so the indications for both are completely different. Now, why uh, or the patients in which I would do uh, eye stent are going to be the ones where I would be scared to do a trap. I would like to defer the trap for maybe the patient reasons or my own reasons. For example, young patients who have, um, say, an unmedicated, uh, uh, a medicated IOP, which is uncontrolled on two AGMs or so, you know, rather than giving them the option of only trabeculectomy, 
this is one thing that you can try also the advantage of any mix procedure uh, also including eye stent is the fact that it does not go through the conjunctiva oh, okay. so there it's a completely conjunctival sparing procedure Hello? so a trap done post uh, any mix procedure Hello? has as much of success as it would in the first go itself so in my opinion it's a good option it, it's a new uh, evolution in glaucoma so we're all very excited to have another option which is a bridge between medicines which is very conservative and trabeculectomy which is very aggressive so let's look at it at like from that perspective Trabical also being, you know, hmm. it's time tested being done in a very very complicated cases as well like both thermos and all that the trabecular trabecular is time tested and with very good result and if there's any failure we have ways and means to correct it